Hey, what's up guys? I am Nitij and in this video, I will show you the different ways in which we can find an element within a web page using Selenium. There are a number of ways to do that which you will find out in this video. So stay tuned and watch this video to the end. Also, this is the part 2 of the UI automation series in which I am demonstrating how we can use Visual Studio and Unit and Selenium to create our unit testing project and then subsequently automate testing of user interfaces. I would like to advise you to watch part first if you are new to all the technologies being used in this video. After watching part 1, you will understand how you can get started and can create a new and unit test project in Visual Studio. So without further delay, let's get started and I am going to continue from the project which I created in part 1 in which a new Chrome browser instance was being created to navigate to a URL. I will continue from there and I will show you 8 different ways in which we can fetch the reference of a web element. Those ways are using the id value, using the name value, using class name, using tag name, using a CSS selector search query, using xpath which I don't really recommend. Still I want to tell you about it so that you can know it. Using an anchor's link text or using its partial link text which is kind of the same like link text. Ok so now let's see all of these different ways in action by quickly writing their code example. I will be using a custom html file to open up in the chrome browser and then in this html file we are going to add the controls which we are going to find using selenium by using all of these different ways which I just mentioned. This is visual studio code and the index.html file is open in it. So I am going to add the html element which we are going to find using the different ways which I just mentioned. There is a label for the full name field and there is an input of type text with the class value as full name, the id value as txt full name. There is also a name attribute with a value and there is also a custom attribute. Let's also add the style element within the head of this web page which is containing the class which this input element is using which is full name. Now let's get back to our n unit test project in Visual Studio. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is to replace this google.com URL with the index.html page which we have created and which is containing the elements which we want to find. Now to find any html element and then to save its reference somewhere in a field, first we need to create a field of the type iweb element and once we have successfully fetched the reference of the element, then this field will be of the type iweb element and it will contain its reference. To find the element in one of different ways, all we need to do is to first execute the function webdriver.findElement and then we can use the different methods available within the by class. So in our case, first we are fetching the input elements value which is this one using its id which is txt full name and that can be done by calling by.id and then providing the value of the id which is txt full name. So let's just do that. And let me just zoom in a little bit so that you guys can see it. This should be enough to fetch the value and now when we have fetched the reference of this txt full name then let's also send some value inside it by mocking the keyboard input so let's just do that. This can be done by first accessing the field and then calling the method send keys. Inside send keys we are providing the argument of the string value which we want to set in the input field so let's just do that. In the bracket I have provided the means with which we have found the web element so that you can see the differences when we will be switching to different ways of finding this element. Now before we run this code let's just also comment out this webdriver.close statement so that we can see the chrome browser being opened and the value being set in the input field. Now let's just run this test function by clicking on run all in the test explorer. This is the chrome browser instance which we just created and you can see that in this input field we have set the value by first fetching the fields reference using its id. So this is how we can fetch the element using its id and now it's time to see how we can do that by using the elements name attribute value and that can be done by simply calling the method by.name and then providing the value which is containing inside the name attribute. So in this html page you can see that the name attribute has been set with the value full name with the space between full and name and that exact value is being used over here. Let's also replace this id with the value name to simply know that we are fetching the elements reference by using its name value. Let's run the test function again. 
you can see that this time the value is found by name which simply means that we have fetched the reference by using name similar to an elements name attribute value we can also fetch an elements reference and then find it by using its class name so you can see that the class attribute has been set with this value full name so if we want to find any element by using its class name then we can do that too we simply have to call the method by.className and then we need to provide the value of the class name as an argument and let's just execute this test function to see it in action so the text is now found by class name we can also find an element by simply using its tag name or the tag value which is this one input in the case of this input text field and that can be done by simply calling the method by dot tag name now keep one thing in mind that these search queries can return multiple results and we will always get the reference of the first element within those search results so when we are finding the element using its tag name and when they are multiple input elements within a web page then the first element which is found will be the one which will be set in this fields reference value so that is something to keep in mind and now let's also replace this class with tag so it will become found by tag name now let's run it you can see the text is now found by tag name now i will show you how we can find any element by using its attribute and that attributes value this can be done by using the method css selector so if you are aware of how we can provide the search query when selecting any element by using jquery or maybe even html then you will know this type of way in which we can provide the search query so this is the tag name and this is the attribute value this is the value which is set within the attribute and in this way we can use the css selector method to find any element which is containing this attribute with this value this type of search query is similar to what is used in jquery if you are aware of it if not then don't worry about it it is simple enough to understand and you can use this example for simple searches for elements when we just want to find it by using a single attribute and its value so let's run this test function to see if our value is being set inside it or not again our input element is being found and the value is being set found by css selector there is another way in which we can find an element by using its attribute so i don't really recommend you to use xpath because it is kind of confusing and at times difficult to understand and to figure out so what xpath simply means is that we will provide the exact path of the element which we want to find or maybe even a kind of a filter which can return multiple results based on the query value which we have provided in our case we are simply finding the input within the root which is the body so we are providing the tag name which is input this is the attribute and this is the attributes value again i don't really recommend you to use xpath because it is not easy to use and even harder to maintain so just avoid it if you can because you can do everything that you want to do over here in a much better way using css selector or maybe other ways like tag name class name id value etc still let's see if our element is being found or not by using xpath and there is the value which we have set which is found by xpath next i will show you how we can find an anchor link by using its link text value for that first i'm going to add an anchor link over here so this is the anchor link with the link text submit information and whenever we will click on this anchor link then this code will be called which is simply first finding this span with the id my span and then it is setting its inner text value as submit clicked so we are going to click on this anchor link by first finding it using its link text so let's just do that let's first create a new field of type iweb element and let's just name it as anchor we need to again use the same method which is element, but this time we are using by dot link text so this method will accept the argument of the link text value which in this case is a submit information so i'm just going to copy it from over here and then let's just paste this value and that's pretty much it to find this anchor element next i will simply call anchor.click to simulate the click event on the anchor element and now let's run this function you can see that the span has the inner text as submit clicked which simply means that our code is being able to find this anchor using its link and then it is simulating the click event 
there is another way in which we can find the anchor element using its link text and that is by providing its partial link text in this case what we can do is we can simply provide a part of the link text value instead of providing the entire text i am not really sure in which scenarios this method is useful but still i want to show you that this method is available if in need arises that you need to provide partial link text although i don't know what that need can be but in any case we can do that and we can find the anchor element by using it so this type of query can mean that we can get a number of different anchor elements which will have their link text partially similar to this value so as i have already told you we will always get the first result set as the reference within this field now let's run the test function again you can see that the spans inner text is again submit clicked which simply means that the anchor is being found and then subsequently being clicked by this statement so these were the different ways in which we can find any element within a web page and then we can save its reference in a field and then subsequently we can do a number of different stuff with that reference whatever we need to do and that would be everything that this video has to offer thank you so much for watching and i hope that you will like it if you do then please like the video and also subscribe to the code first channel for more such videos i am nitej and till we meet next time take care of yourselves and have a great day